Hello guys, thanks for joining this session. In this session, we are going to discuss about Amazon S3 that is a stand for Simple Storage Service. So let's start our discussion. So what is Amazon Simple Storage Service or say what is Amazon S3? So basically Amazon Simple Storage Service is a storage service for the internet. This service provide a simple web interface that we can use to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. So now prior to going into more detailed discussion, I want that we should look into the S3 concepts. So let's look into the S3 concepts. So these are the five key concepts or say jargons or say terminology of S3 that you will get while working with S3. So let's discuss about one by one. So the first concept is buckets. So every time you work with S3, you will hear the term buckets. So basically a bucket is a container for objects stored in S3 or in a simple term, we can say that every object within S3 contained in a bucket. Now moving further, we will look into objects. So what is S3 objects? So in S3 bucket, whatever you will store, you store as an object. Objects are the fundamental entities stored in Amazon S3. So what does this object consist? Object consists of object data and the metadata. Data represent anything which you want to store within S3 like text file, audio video file and any other kind of a file or any other kind of a information which you want to store it. Now here comes the question what is metadata? So basically metadata is nothing but a data about data. That means metadata contains information about the data which is stored within S3 bucket as an object. For example, if you stored a file then metadata of that file is something like when the file is being created within three bucket when it was modified what is the version as it supports versioning as well so such kind of information is called metadata that is data about data and it comes in the form of name value pairs that basically used to describe the objects now moving further we will look into another concept that is called keys so what is keys within s3 domain the keys is related to the identity of the object so in simple term, a key is the unique identifier for an object within a bucket. So one point to remember over here is that every object in a bucket has exactly one key. And the combination of a bucket key and version ID uniquely identify each object. From the development perspective, every object in Amazon S3 can be uniquely addressed through the combination of the bucket name, key and optionally a version as a web service endpoint. Now moving further, let's discuss about regions. So what is regions? So regions related to geographical AWS region where Amazon S3 will store the buckets that we create. So it is always recommended to choose a nearest region to store the bucket so that it will help us to optimizing the latency and minimize the cost and sometimes it helps to address regulatory requirements. So what does it mean? In certain scenarios, some companies don't want their data belongs to other regions for considering the data security. Now moving further, we will discuss about data consistency. Amazon S3 provides read after write consistency for puts of new objects in our S3 bucket. So in a simple term, we can say that data consistency is mainly related to the mechanism by which you can store the data and once you retrieve the data you will get the same data in return so what does it mean let's understand with a better example suppose that whenever you put an object into the s3 bucket so to achieve high availability amazon s3 replicate the data across multiple servers within aws data center so in case of failure you can get the data which you have saved it. So now coming back. So now we understand that Amazon S3 concept. Now we will move further and we will look into some of the features of S3. So let's look into the features and the features we are going to discuss about the Amazon S3 classes, bucket policies, AWS identity and access management, which we have already discussed. 
but we will discuss here with the perspective of S3. Then we will also look into access control list. We will discuss about versioning and we will discuss about what are the operations which is being supported by AWS S3. But first let's look into the Amazon S3 classes. So what is Amazon S3 classes? Basically S3 comes with variety of flavors and which is coming with different pricing model along with the different durability and availability. So if you look into this chart then you will find that it is nearly six type of storage classes that means S3 comes in six types of offering that means first one is the standard which is designed for frequently in this offering AWS provides durability of 11 nines that is 99.9 times 9 percent and availability of 99.99 percent .99 and to achieve the high availability it is replicated to more than three zones or at least three zones in such offering there is no commitment that means you use and pay for usage now moving further to the other offering that is a standard infrequent access this particular kind of a storage class is basically designed for long-lived infrequently access data so it is really a good option of a storage if you want to store infrequent data which is something like the data which you access on a weekly basis or monthly basis such kind of data you can store in such storage class and AWS provides the same kind of durability and availability same like a standard one in such offering backup is also available in three availability zone or more than three availability zone but here you should at least commit it for 30 days and you will retrieve the data pay for that as per GB retrieval fee the third kind of storage class is really very interesting one that is intelligent tiering this kind of offering is suitable for those scenario where your data retrieval pattern is not defined and your retrieval is changing as per need basis so in such offering durability and availability is similar like what we have seen in a standard and a standard IA that is infrequent access along with availability zones that is it supports or it takes backup in three availability zones and more but here also commitment needed for at least 30 days there is no retrieval fees only they charge monitoring and automation fee on a per object basis moving to the another storage class that is one zone infrequent access this is a good choice for non-critical data their durability is similar to what we have seen in earlier storage classes but the availability is different from the other three and it is 99.5 percent and the availability zone it is available to only one availability zone and the fee structure is based upon gb retrievals in this kind of a storage class your data is not highly available as it is belong to a single availability zone so in case of failure or any disaster of that particular availability zone you will not get the data back now moving further we will look into a storage class called glacier so glacier is basically designed for long-term data archiving but their retrieval is little slow which is ranging from minute to hour aws provide same kind of a durability for glacier which it provides for other force but availability wise it is not straightforward first you need to restore the archive data and then you will get the 99.99 percent availability and the backup is placed within three availability zone or more but here the commitment needed is 90 days and retrieval wise you first need to restore the data before access it and here also the charges is as per gb basis so another kind of a storage class is rrs which is not recommended by aws and it suits in scenario where infrequent access of data and that data should be non-critical data and their durability availability and availability zones matches the same which we have discussed for a standard a standard ia and intelligent tiering so now moving further we will discuss about bucket policies but prior to discussing about the bucket policies we must have to understand that what actually policies is within aws policies provide a mechanism where we can define the access control to the resources of AWS. So in the same aspect, bucket policies provide centralized access control to buckets and objects based on a variety of conditions, including which operations are allowed, which operations are not allowed. Operations we will discuss further in the same session with the help of policies bucket policies we can define who will access the bucket and who will not access the bucket within aws 
the policies are expressed in the access policy language that basically enables centralized management of permissions and the permission which is attached to a bucket which will be applicable to each of the objects that belongs to that particular bucket now moving further that is aws identity and access management we have a thorough detailed session on this topic which we have discussed earlier if you haven't gone through that session i would suggest that you can go through that session from the amazon s3 bucket perspective we can use iam with amazon s3 to control the type of access a user or group of user has access to a specific parts of an amazon s3 bucket of our aws accounts so let's proceed further and let's discuss about access control list so acl this is again another mechanism by which we can control the access of an aws resources so basically acls are one of the resource based access policy options that we can use to manage access to our buckets and their objects we can use acls to grant basic read write permissions to other aws accounts so here comes point to remember for acls and the point to remember is that you can grant permissions only to other accounts you can't grant permission to users in in your account so you must be asking that in what scenario you can use acls so suppose a bucket owner allows other aws accounts to upload objects permission to these accounts can only be managed using object acl by the aws account that owns the object now moving further let's discuss about versioning so basically versioning used to keep multiple version of an object in one bucket so what is the benefit out of it so basically the functionality of versioning help us to prevent from accidentally overwriting or deleting object and provide us a way to retrieve the previous version of an object now moving further let's discuss about operations in s3 offering we can perform various operations like we can create an object we can write an object we can read an object we can delete an object so these are the operations we which we generally perform so i feel like enough of theory is being done let's stop this session over here and in the next session we will do the labs and whatever we have discussed we will perform those exercises in aws management console so that's it for this session see you in the next session till then bye bye take care